Today I'm going to demonstrate two common techniques of deploying the quill bidirectional thread. As you can see the needle that I'm the thread needles that I'm holding in my hands right now have needles swedged on each end. This is a quill bidirectional thread, PDO. Now we will demonstrate the deployment of the quill bidirectional thread by making our first throw in the middle of the incision. This is done by pulling the thread through halfway until barb engagement is felt. Once that barb engagement is felt, no further pulling is needed. From this point, the surgeon will continue the pattern of a continuous throw until the end of the incision is reached. Now that you've completed your suture pass, you must backstitch in order to secure the barbing within the quill thread. Simply reload the needle in the same manner that you have done up until this point. As you can see, when we perform the backstitch, an X is formed. It is important to note that our labeling calls for a single backstitch, even though it has become common in animal health to perform two backstitches. Once the second back stitch is complete, simply cut the thread off at tissue level. It is important to note that on all quill threads, there is a section of thread approximately one inch from the needle back that has no barbs. Please keep in mind, the barbs must be set in order to get proper barb engagement and to secure the suture pass. Only two places that quill may not be used is above the skin and to tie off. Please take note of that when using any quill thread. The question may arise, how can I complete the suture pass with a second arm without having to switch sides of the exam room table? And the answer is simply do a corrective stitch as shown here. By doing the corrective stitch, the surgeon will be able to forehand the remaining suture pass. Perhaps the most common technique when deploying a quill bidirectional thread is to use it in a dual layer close. We previously closed our suture line by starting at the midpoint of the incision, working out both directions. In this demonstration, I will show you how we start in the apex of the incision and to perform a dual layer close. The yellow foam on our skin pad here will represent a deep tissue layer. We'll begin by taking our quill bidirectional thread and making our first throw into the apex of the incision. Now that we have pulled our thread halfway in and got barb engagement, we'll be able to take one arm of our thread and run at the distance of our incision down in the deep tissue layer. Now that we've completed the deep tissue pass, we will go ahead and make our final throw into the apex and prepare for the back stitch. Remember, back stitching is the key. Now that we've completed our 
deep tissue close, we'll go ahead and close the sub-Q layer or the intradermal pass. This is done as you would close any other intradermal pass by completing the run down the suture line in a horizontal fashion. Remember, quill never comes above the skin. Now that we've completed our intradermal pass, we're going to go ahead and make our final throw into the apex of the incision and prepare for the back stitch. You will now need to complete the back stitch. Once the back stitch is complete, you will take the needle and dunk it or smurf it perpendicular to the incision line and cut the thread off flush with the tissue level. This section of the video will focus on how to start a variable loop or unidirectional quill thread. As you can see in my left hand, the needle holders are holding the needle. In my right hand is the loop of the thread. The unique feature of a quill variable loop or unidirectional thread is that the loop has the ability to adjust in size. You can make the loop bigger or smaller depending on what your surgical needs are. To begin the pass with the unidirectional thread, the recommendation is starting approximately a quarter of an inch from the apex and taking your first bite on one side of the deep tissue layer as demonstrated here in the yellow foam. Pull the thread and then take the needle and fish it through the loop. This process will begin the anchoring process for the unidirectional thread. Now that the anchor is set, we will take the needle and we will complete our first throw by going and making that throw into the apex of the incision as shown. Now that the first throw is complete, take the unidirectional thread and do a continuous run to the end of the suturing line. Remember, you always have the option with the unidirectional of doing a dual layer pass and don't forget the back stitch. <laughs> 